Welcome back to another episode of Tech TLDR. In today's SpaceX update, I have some really good news regarding pretty much everything. SN11, SN10, and a little bit of info regarding what happened with the SN8, the FAA's miscommunication with SpaceX. There's a little more news about that now, more clarification. So if you want to know all about that, stick through the whole episode. And also be sure to click the like button if you like this content. It helps me out a ton with the algorithm. It helps me out and lets me know that you guys like this content. Let's get into this. So right here, we have the SN50. This engine, Raptor engine, is going into the SN10. This is today. As you may or may not know, the Starships are going onto their launch pads. They then have the engines installed into them. And I just love, I like how small, in comparison to the, the platform that it's on, you know this is a Starship. This is the engine. Only a few of these little guys in there. It's crazy to think that these little guys have enough thrust and power to lift those massive behemoths. I mean, you can see the comparison. There's a human being right here. This guy's walking. Obviously, it, it's bigger than him, but it's just so small in comparison to what you would think an engine would look like in a rocket. I love the, the aesthetic of it. I just think that's the funniest thing. If you guys agree, let me know in the comments. I don't know. It's just something goofy I found. But it's good to see that SpaceX is hurrying with this. The engines are going in. This is the first one of the engines to go in. So I'm sure that over the next few days, we're going to see the rest, all three in total, be put inside of it. And after that, static fires. And after a static fire, you know what comes next. Regarding the SN11, this is from Boca Chica Gal on Twitter. The SN11 is going into a tie bay. This is where it's going to uh, continue and finish the completion of the Starship itself. Now, like I said, it's not going to get the engines until it goes on the launch pad, but they're... SN9 has gone, unfortunately. So there is an extra launch pad ready for this beauty once it's all said and done. Now regarding the FAA with SpaceX, a lot of controversy on this. Christian Davenport, Davenport, I'm sorry if I mispronounced this guy's name. <laughs> Whatever you want to say the reason was of why the FAA didn't allow the SN9 to launch for so long, there's more and more evidence coming out about this. One of the things that we saw originally was that the SpaceX had actually broken their license. So I talked about this before. SpaceX, the license that they had when you're doing space launches like this, the risk that can be involved in terms of somebody getting hurt has to be less than one in a million. The, the odds of it have to be so low. It has to be less than one in a million. That's how you get the clearance for these licenses. SpaceX tried to get a license that went above that, saying that there's more of a chance than one in a million that somebody could get hurt, and that was not approved. There was a miscommunication somewhere along the line. SpaceX thought they had it. The FAA did not allow that. Christian Harris said that, from what he has heard, there was an FAA inspector on site for the SN8. SpaceX was working to show all safety protocols were met. Everything was up to par with what they needed. However, there were different miscommunications along the line. Let's be real here. We cannot blame anybody for this fault. Think of how many different moving components you have to a rocket launch. Not the rocket itself. You have to make sure the area is clear. You have to make sure everything's set in place. It's not just one rocket and one guy lighting a fuse and running away from it. There are a whole teams of people in different parts of this entire operation that have to make sure everything is connected and everything's going well. I can't imagine the stress that the few people who are running the whole operation have when these go off. I'd literally be pulling out my hair just at the, the thought of having to run all of this at the same time. It's no wonder there was a miscommunication. It's unfortunate. SpaceX, the FAA, they're clearing things up now. They're getting the proper licensing. They're communicating much better. So, like I said before, people were speculating a lot. And I didn't. I agreed and I disagreed about the whole, it's government meddling, it's this, it's administration, it's, it's uh, Bezos and Blue Origin want to get involved and they want to stop them. There's... There's regulations to this stuff. Things were not met. Miscommunications happened. It's as simple as that. And the last thing I have for you guys, Elon Musk had tweeted about the SN9's engines. He said it was foolish of us not to start three engines and immediately shut down one as two are needed to land. You know what that means? The SN10 is going to have an entirely different way of operating its engines. We're going to see a much different um, landing attempt this time. If you don't remember from the SN9, I'm sure you remember. I'm going to say it anyways. It overcorrected itself pretty much and went at like a 45 degree angle when it finally tapped the ground and exploded. Elon Musk is saying that by doing the three engines instead, 
this is what hopefully will correct it it still adds risk though to the, the landing itself but right now you have to try anything they gotta try, they gotta see what works they gotta see what doesn't work every failure that they do is this one step closer to success and to be honest with you i would rather have a hundred failures and one success than to have two failures and one success the more failures they have with this the more things they know they can't do so that way when one day you go to the moon you go to mars with your family on vacation during the holidays you know hey they failed hundreds of times so they're probably gonna they, they will safely land vehicles they know what not to do that's the most important thing in this thing what not to do they're figuring it out they're working on it i'm excited for the next i would say this is my personal opinion give it less than two weeks we're going to see static fires for the sn10 people are saying the end of february february is a short month don't forget i think in less than two weeks we're going to see a static fire from the sn10 we'll see the sn11 out there on the launch pad next to it same the way we saw the sn9 and the sn10 that's all i have for you guys in this episode if you want more of this content be sure to subscribe to the channel also like button make sure to click it and let me know in the comments what you guys think about what's going on with the s10 the fa all that stuff i love answering comments and questions that you guys have interacting with everybody either way be sure to have a good one